Lipids in the digestive tract are emulsified by bile salts, lipases, then break down the lipids, and the products are absorbed into the enterocytes. With the help of microsomal triglyceride transfer protein, MTP, enterocytes resynthesize lipids and package them into chylomicrons with ApoB48, containing 48% protein coded by the ApoB gene. A part of the resynthesized lipids are stored as cytosolic lipid droplets. Chylomicrons are then released from the basolateral side and enter the general circulation through the thoracic duct. Free cholesterol is either excreted back into the intestinal lumen or into the bloodstream as HDL. The liver secretes VLDL and nascent HDL. The liver packs triglycerides, cholesterol, and other lipids into VLDL with the help of MTP with the protein ApoB100, containing 100% protein coded by the ApoB gene. Chylomicrons and VLDL take up ApoC2 and ApoE from HDL. Lipoprotein lipase, present in the capillary walls of adipose, muscle, and other tissues, is activated by ApoC2 and hydrolyzes a portion of triglycerides in chylomicrons and VLDL, converting them to chylomicron remnants and IDL, respectively. Mutation of lipoprotein lipase, or its cofactor, ApoC2, results in severe triglyceridemia as chylomicrons persist in the circulation, while VLDL production can be regulated by the liver. An increase in triglyceride accumulation in the blood can cause impaired blood flow to organs such as the pancreas, leading to symptoms of pancreatitis. Furthermore, these triglyceride-rich chylomicrons also deposit in the skin, causing eruptive xanthomas, and may also be seen in the retina, referred to as lipemia retinalis. Hepatose plenomegaly is also present when macrophages in the liver and spleen uptake the excess chylomicrons. The condition is called type 1 dyslipidemia, or familial chylomicronemia. Back to the lipid metabolism, chylomicron remnants are taken up by the liver. VLDL, which is converted to IDL, is further hydrolyzed by hepatic lipase to lose ApoE, forming LDL with lower triglyceride and higher cholesterol content. LDL supplies cholesterol to extrahepatic tissues. Remaining LDL is endocytosed by the liver. The LDL receptor mediates the endocytosis of cholesterol-rich LDL. This process occurs in all nucleated cells, but is primarily active in the liver, which removes approximately 70% of LDL from the circulation. LDL is directly involved in the development of atherosclerosis, the process responsible for the majority of cardiovascular diseases. A defective LDL receptor leads to high LDL in the blood, resulting in type 2 dyslipidemia or hypercholesterolemia. Corneal arcus and xanthomas are also seen in this condition. Xanthomas develop because of lipid leakage from the vasculature into the surrounding tissue, where macrophages subsequently phagocytose them, forming foam cells. Familial hypercholesterolemia results in an almost 100-fold increased risk of coronary artery disease. Patients with untreated receptor-negative conditions seldom survive beyond their 20s, whereas those with the defective subtype have a better prognosis, but inevitably develop clinically apparent atherosclerotic vascular disease by age 30. The condition follows an autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. Individuals carrying one copy of this mutation have cholesterol levels around 300 milligrams per deciliter. Those with two copies have levels of 700 milligrams per deciliter or higher. This is familial hypercholesterolemia. A major function of ApoE is to mediate the binding of lipoproteins to cell surface receptors and internalize them. 
beta lipoproteins, the remnants of chylomicrons and VLDL, accumulate when there is a defect in APOC E. This accumulation leads to premature atherosclerosis with a tenfold increased risk of premature coronary artery disease and the development of tubero eruptive and Palmer xanthomas. This condition is called type 3 dyslipidemia or dysbetalipoproteinemia. Defects in insulin sensitivity lead to an overproduction of very low density lipoprotein, VLDL, by the liver and a decrease in lipoprotein lipase activity. This ultimately results in hypertriglyceridemia, specifically classified as type 4 dyslipidemia or familial hypertriglyceridemia. This condition is inherited in an autosomal dominant manner. Hypertriglyceridemia increases the risk of acute pancreatitis, similar to type 1 dyslipidemia. This is familial hypertriglyceridemia. Meanwhile, the enzyme cholesterol ester transfer protein, CETP, transfers cholesterol esters from HDL to VLDL and LDL. The plasma enzyme lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase, LCAT, catalyzes the esterification of free cholesterol present in extrahepatic tissues and transfers it to HDL, scavenging peripheral tissue cholesterol. Matured HDL rich in cholesterol are endocytosed by liver hepatocytes. This ability of HDL to promote reverse cholesterol transport is considered the basis for its role in reducing the risk of atherosclerosis. Exercise plays a huge role in increasing blood HDL levels. Thus, the treatment for all types of dyslipidemias includes physical activity, along with a healthy diet, quitting smoking, and avoiding alcohol. In type 1, dyslipidemia hyperchylomicronemia, lipid-lowering therapy such as fibrates, niacin, and omega-3 fatty acids has little to no role as they act either by decreasing VLDL or increasing lipoprotein lipase activity. Dietary modification is the mainstay. With a very low fat diet, with a fat intake of less than 10% to 15% of daily calories, that is no more than 20 to 30 grams fat per day. The goal is to maintain triglycerides below the threshold for acute pancreatitis, below 1,000 milligrams per deciliter. Plasmapheresis may be needed in acute complicated pancreatitis. In type 2, dyslipidemia, familial hypercholesterolemia, cholesterol is the main issue, which is controlled by statins, decreasing hepatic production of cholesterol, bile acid sequestrants binding to bile acids, and ezetimibe preventing cholesterol absorption at the small intestine brush border. Type 3, dyslipidemia, dysbetalipoproteinemia, where cholesterol and triglycerides are both increased, statins with fibrates are the mainstay of therapy. PCSK9 inhibitors could be helpful in patients who are resistant to statin or fibrate therapy. In type 4, dyslipidemia, familial hypertriglyceridemia, lipid-lowering therapy with fibrates, which increase lipoprotein lipase activity and decrease VLDL triglycerides, niacin, which decreases VLDL production by the liver, and fish oil, which decreases VLDL production and triglyceride levels, are important parts of the treatment. Adherence to lifestyle modifications, dietary changes, and medication is challenging for patients. Patient education is thus an integral part of management. Type 1 hyperchylomicronemia, impaired breakdown of chylomicrons due to lipoprotein lipase deficiency, managed mainly through dietary modification to prevent pancreatitis. Type 2, familial hypercholesterolemia, defective clearance of LDL cholesterol, often due to dysfunctional LDL receptors, treated with statins and other cholesterol-lowering medications. Type 3, dysbetalipoproteinemia, 
defects in APOE lead to elevated levels of both cholesterol and triglycerides, requires a combination of statins and fibrates. Type 4, familial hypertriglyceridemia, increased VLDL production and decreased lipoprotein lipase activity result in elevated triglycerides, treated with fibrates, niacin, and fish oil. 